Hey everybody, this is Kamran and today we will be talking about the hash table data structure. Map, dictionary, hash map and associative array are all the different names of the hash table data structure. Imagine we have a fruit shop and we are maintaining a price list for different fruits that we sell. Let's say that we are selling these 5 different fruits and given in front of each of the fruits, we have the price for that fruit. Now from the data structures that we have covered so far in this series, we can use an array to represent the price list. So we have an array of arrays where each item has two values. The first value in the array is going to be the name of the fruit and the second one is the price for that fruit. Now imagine a customer comes in and asks for the price of kiwi. To get that price, we will have to go through all the items of the array to find the fruit that we are looking for. And once we reach that fruit, we'll be able to get the price from there. The algorithmic complexity of finding the price from the array is going to be linear. Now for a simple data set when we have only 5 different fruits in the shop, the array representation looks fine. But imagine if we start selling 1000 different items. In that case, our search is going to get much and much slower. And it is going to have an impact on the user experience. We can improve our price list by using the hash table data structure where the algorithmic complexity for finding the price is always going to be constant. Which means that even if we start selling 1 million different items, it is still not going to impact the speed of search. But what is a hash table and why will it be faster? A hash table is simply a data structure which is mainly used for the key value lookup. Which means that we have keys and for each key, we have the value that we want to store for that key. This means that if we use the hash table for our price list, we will be able to have the fruit names as the keys and the prices as the values. And whenever we need the price of some fruit, we will simply look for the relevant fruit name key and get the price. This will allow us to get the prices in much faster manner without using any iterations. Alright, so now that we know what the hash tables are, let's look at the implementation to see how we can create a hash table and what are the different operations you can perform. We will be looking at the implementation in JavaScript but the concepts are mostly similar in the other languages also. First of all, we need to create an empty hash table for our price list. We will do that by creating an object of the map class. Now to set the values, we can use the set method. So for example, here we are setting the value for the apple key to be 5 and the value for orange key to be 7. For the values, we can have the booleans, objects, strings or any other data type as well. So for example, here we are setting the value for the mango key to be 4 USD, which is a string. Next, to get the values out of the map, we simply use the get method. So for example, here we are getting the values that we stored for mango and the apple keys. To delete the items from the hash table, we use the delete method with the key name. So for example, here I am deleting the mango and the apple keys from the hash table. Next, we have the size method, which simply gives us the number of items that we have in the hash table. So for example, here we are getting 1 because we only have the orange item in the hash table. And finally, we have the clear method which removes everything that we have in the hash table and makes it empty. The complexity of all these hash table operations is going to be constant. Which means that it doesn't matter how many items do we have in the hash table, it is always going to take the same amount of time. In JavaScript, we can also create the hash tables using the object notation. So we can rewrite this hash table implementation as this also. So we have an empty object to create an empty hash table, add a notation to set and get the values and the delete keyword to delete the values from the hash table. Alright, so now that we know what the hash tables are, the implementation and the different operations you can perform on them, let's understand how they work behind the scenes. Now you don't really have to worry about this because most of the languages already have the implementation for the hash tables built into them. But it's still a good idea to know what's going on behind the scenes. If we look at the parts of a hash table, first of all we have the key against which we store the values. Then we have the value itself that we need to store. For the values we mostly have a simple array of values behind the scenes in which we store the values for each of the keys. Now you might be wondering if we have this simple array behind the scenes, how do we know which value belongs to which key? And the answer to that is the third and most important part of the hash table which is the hashing function. The job of the hashing function is to take the input which is the key and give back a hash code which maps to the index of the array at which we are going to store the value for that key. 
Let's take an example to understand this better. Let's say that we have a key called apple and we need to store the value of 5 for this apple. The key will be passed to the hashing function and the hashing function is going to help find out the index at which we will store the value. Let's say that the hashing function gives back the index 4 and then we are going to store the price of apple at the index 4. Next, let's say that we have orange with a price of 4. Again, we will pass the orange to the hashing function. Hashing function is going to give back the index. Let's say that it gives back 2. And then we are going to store the price for oranges at the index 2. Later on, let's say that we need to read the price for the apples. Again, we will pass the apple key to the hashing function. Hashing function is going to give back the array index at which we stored the price for the apple. And once we have that index, we'll go and read the value from the relevant index. There are a few things that you should keep in mind when creating a hash table. First, for the same input, the hashing function should always give the same output. For example, if we get the hash code for the string called apple and it gave back 5, no matter how many times should we feed the apple key into the hashing function, it should always give back 5. And the second, you should make sure to handle the hash table collisions. What do we mean by that? Since there are infinite number of strings in this universe, it is quite possible that our hashing function might give back the same index for two different key strings. For example, let's say that we get the hash code for the string apple and it gives back 5. Later on, let's say that we try with the string called orange and the hash code for orange is also 5. This is called a hash table collision. Our implementation should make sure that when the hash table collision happens, our hash table is not losing the data and it is gracefully handling these cases. There are two different ways of handling the hash table collisions, separate chaining and the open addressing. Open addressing is a large topic, so for now, we will only be covering the separate chaining. Let's say that we have this hash table with three different values and we try to add the fourth element called mango. Let's say that our hashing function gave back the index of 5. Now, since the 5 index is already occupied by the value for the apple key, if we put the value for the mango, we will lose the value for the apple. So in this case, what we do is take the values for both the apple and the mango keys and create a separate data structure, for example a linked list. And instead of putting the single value in this index, we put the address for that data structure at that index. And this way we get to keep the values for both the apple and the mango keys. And same goes for the other indexes also. Whenever a collision happens, a new linked list or an array will be created for that index and instead of storing the value, the reference to that data structure will be stored in that place. You should know that having a large number of collisions add to the complexity of the hash tables because we have additional data structures to read from and write to. A good hashing function is the one that has least number of hash table collisions. Alright, so that is all for this one. Leave a like if you liked the video and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next video about the pre-data structure.